I think they said it loud enough. And there's uh, your mic is right over there. Hello everybody, how are we all? Have you had a good Comic Con? That's cool. Have you had a good Comic Con? I've had a great Comic Con. I've never been to San Antonio before, but I'm happy to be here. Yes. It's cool. Have, have you had a chance to figure out what your favorite thing is yet about San Antonio? Um, no, because I haven't literally left the hall yet. I got in late last night. Although, um, what I'm really enjoying is the weather. No. <laughs> no, I haven't. I love it, I love it. It is a little I hot. I do love a little hot and steamy. Who doesn't? <laughs> I'm How's not going to touch that one. All right. So, <laughs> um, you know, what I love is you have had a pretty incredible career. Um, although, based on this sizzle reel, we know that your name has become very synonymous. Yes, it's a really big picture of you up there. Yeah, look at that. It's, it's kind of, I it's very it's... meta. Um, your name has become synonymous with characters like Will Turner and Legolas, and yeah, you're, you can, you can. I wonder which is the fan favorite, Will Turner? Yeah. Legolas. I mean, you gotta admit, he was pretty bad. All right, we'll do a deep dive. What about, um, I can't even remember the character's name. Duke of Bucky. Duke of Bucky. That's kind of deep. What's he say? I think it was that. And, uh, Joe Byrne. Yeah, crickets. Crickets. That was a movie with Ned Kelly, called Ned Kelly with Heath Ledger. Oh. There you go, crickets. That was a long time ago. Which is crazy because... But don't we all love here the Heath Ledger still, the Joker? Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, what I love about that, because you just it gave us a great example, is that you've had a rather robust career outside of those franchises, playing some pretty legendary characters. Um, the Three Musketeers being one of my favorites. Because oh, really? Oh. Um, you know, the Kingdom of Heaven. Woo! You know, you oh. and Troy. Harris! Um, there you go. You, you said earlier in your career that these were, you always idolized these bigger than life roles. Yeah, like, you know, like, yeah. For you, throughout your career, has that changed? If so, how? And I'm really curious, as kind of a backup in your head, has that changed with parenthood? Oh, yeah. Um. I'd say I, you know, I, I, I'd say I, I fortunately feel like I still have a pretty healthy imagination and an appetite for size and scope and scale, um, which was what all of those movies really were, a, the opportunity to be a part of. Um, and, you know, being a father has brought so many good things into my life, um, patience being one of them. The opportunity to stay home and actually do some parenting at times um, was something that I, I took a priority on, especially with my son. And now, um, you know, I am uh, I'm enjoying all of it. I think, you know, I was I was so blessed when like I had those giant trilogies one after the other at the beginning of my career. It was like, wait, what? Those two came along, and I was right for both. Um, but. Uh, it's interesting to see the movies in the, in the theaters today. Things, is, things are, how do you feel about the movies in the theaters today? I'd actually love to know. Man. Yeah. N -I -E -O -N. Yes, no, us. Some, some great, are we all Marvel fans? Is that what we are? <laughs> yes, Marvel. Okay, cool. But we like, uh, yeah, I mean, it's interesting because it's a new, it's a new, we're entering this new phase as well, I think. You know, we're gonna see how, how movies adapt with AI and, New world of artificial intelligence. It's going to be yeah. kind of exciting to see what happens, right? Maybe I'll be a young version of Legolas again. Oh, <laughs> don't get everybody's hopes up. You know? <laughs> but what I love about this is something that kind of spins off of that is these legendary roles have come with a lot of fight choreography. Um, they come with learning multiple weapons. Yeah. Um, some real, some you know made up and with their own names. Uh, <laughs> were you at all familiar or trained in any combat training, fencing, martial arts, or otherwise before taking these roles? 
And uh, did you pick up any skills that you brought along with you? So I, I, you know, funnily enough, when I was at school in England, fencing was something that I remember doing at a really early age. It was one of those weird things that, I don't know, I feel like that's pretty esoteric to be fencing at school, you know what I mean? So, so here we a, take ballet, tap, and jazz. Right, right. Where you're from, fencing. Tap. Yeah, it was fencing in England. But, um, so there was a little bit of history of that. But of course, when I, when I went out to New Zealand, I spent, I think I was one of the first characters out in New Zealand. And I did like, I did like three months of training. Um, a lot of that was horseback, although I'd ridden a bit as a kid, and then archery, and then movement, and certainly sword play. I think Kingdom of Heaven had some really cool broadsword kind of work that I really enjoyed. Um, um, I would say that it's sort of like if any of you are into dancing and do dance class or anything like that, any of those stunt routines are basically like learning dance routines and you kind of go and you kind of, you have a dance partner and you got to kind of like try not to take their head off and they're trying not to stab you in the gut but make it look like you are, you know? Um, so a lot of it was 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 learning those things, but I I think I have a good um, I think I had a, a good skill set for some of that stuff. And today I still like to pick up a bow every now and again. Weirdly, I think it's something about the meditation of it. There's an aspect of that that I really love. Um, and uh, and of course I do a lot of other wild crazy stuff, as seen in. This show I did for Peacock, which I don't know if any of you guys saw, but all I know, Bling to the Edge. Oh. It was one of those things where I put, dropped, we dropped it on Peacock, and I was like, does people watch Peacock? I think Peacock's great, right, but yeah. yeah. So um, I learned to do some crazy stuff on that. So I do like to be in my body as opposed to in my head. Uh, that is something, I, and I'm actually gonna skip to that question because that was definitely on there. You have been called an adventure enthusiast. Oh, there you go. <laughs> um, I think is the, the crafted word for it. Um, but you literally have taken head on these franchises, these movies, but also this Peacock series to the edge where you're racing motorbikes, you're rock climbing, you're jumping out of planes. You got certified in two weeks to yeah. jump. Okay, so one, how is your adrenaline still functioning? Uh, and two, you know, was there one moment um, that was most memorable for you? Or did you kind of stop and go, this is absolutely crazy. I should probably not be doing this, but I'm, I'm gonna do it anyway. Yes, um, so I would say, oh, yeah. Um, of all, they were all super challenging in their own unique way, like a sort of slight torture chamber of their own making, which was weird that I was doing it. Wing seating is, so I learned to skydive in 25 jumps. Luke Aikens was my, um, my trainer. And Luke Aikens, if you're not familiar, is one of the world's greatest skydivers and he jumped from 25,000 feet without a parachute. So he jumped without a parachute and landed in a net, which was his sort of stunt thing, which is crazy and phenomenal. So he had me on this learning curve and the trajectory was if I park these markers, then after 25 jumps, I can, I can wingsuit, which ordinarily takes 200 jumps. You can't jump a wingsuit unless you've jumped out of a plane at least 200 times. So on my 26th jump, I jumped a wingsuit. And <laughs> it's, um, the crazy thing about wing seating is it can go south very quickly. So if and you go in, not understand what it's like a squirrel suit. It's like you're in one of those. I think you might have seen like 15 seconds of people base jumping and into these suits and flying around. You know, it's like it's like you're a human jet torpedo or something. Anyway, that's what it felt like. And but if you if you go into some kind of weird spiral at the wrong time and you've got to pull your shoe. It can get very, it can get very challenging mentally and also physically. So that's where things go wrong. But I had a couple of very close calls on that where I had a very intense wobble right towards where I was about to pull the shoe. And you have to pull a shoe at a certain altitude. And if you go too low, then obviously that's a problem too. So there were a lot of, a lot of variables that were messing with my head. I swam to 102 feet on one breath when I was free diving, and I learned that in four days, which is like. 37 meters, and then I climbed this crazy peak in Moab and stand on what felt like a pizza box, 
and just the exposure, which is basically what it feels like when you're looking down the mountain and like 400 feet all around you is terrifying. And I would say that everything that I've done in movies up until now probably helped. <laughs> it's like, when you're on a giant movie set, like it feels like there's a massive adrenaline running through you the whole time because there's a lot of like on moments and and then it's like okay here we go so um it was it was interesting it was an idea that came up through covid i was like everybody's so afraid i can feel it and i get it and i get it it was a challenging time for everyone in the world we we all survived we all lived through something really 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 challenging but i was like what do I do about this fear feeling that I don't like? So I'm going to try and overcome it. And initially, I wanted to do something in a blue zone space, yeah. where you, learn, you meet people who kind of live long and prosper, as it were. Um, but um, nobody really wanted to finance that. But they were into the idea of like let's throw throwing me out of a plane, plane. Yeah. down to the bottom of the ocean and up a mountain. So I did that, which kind of worked, and I, 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 you know, it was good. It is weird doing it unscripted, though. I will say that's really terrifying. So it's interesting because one, I know a lot of people out there because you're you're speaking so calmly about these things that there are people googling it's in my these numbers mirror, you know what I mean? that, that you're, <laughs> you're, you're spitting out like 400. They're spitting these things out and going, oh, I would not be calm. Um, but suddenly you go, but unscripted, very terrifying. Um, you know. Well, what you've done stand-up. I mean, for me, stand-up would be the same thing. I'd be like, wait, well, you've got to stand here and say something. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm good with that. But you did go into a little bit of a space with another uh, production that you're working on right now with Bryce Dallas Howard, which you do step into the role of a method actor who is, for lack of a better word, has been thrown together with his improv troupe of three uh, to take on Britain's un underground criminal yeah. organization. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a really cool premise. Uh, Nick Mohammed from Ted Lasso, uh, Bryce Dallas Howard, myself, um, a really great, uh, Ian McShane, Paddy Constantin, really wow. great, Sean Bean from, yeah. Sean Bean from obviously Lord of the Rings and, and other great movies, but we worked together there. Um, the, the premise is these three kind of unique characters who work with Bryce Dallas Howard, who is a improvised teacher. So in, improvisation, the, the premise is you say yes and. So you get up on stage and anything that anything goes. And the way you keep an improvisation going in, and improvisation is where, if you feel that for those that don't know, is where there's no script. It's just you keep it, you keep the conversation going by just kind of going yes and yes. Oh that's funny. You're a doctor who likes to plumb the depths of the universe as well? Yes. And when I plumb the depths of the universe, I look for giant jellyfish. Oh wow! So you're a, anyway, it goes like that, something like that. You get it, and you it can, can be see very how funny. This can go very wrong very quickly in <laughs> yeah. a criminal organization. So and we've seen some shots where you still somehow end up beat up and bloody. It's true. It's true. It's true. And I kind of play two characters because I kind of escalate it by saying we we're, we're supposed to go and buy block of cigarettes from a news agent, which is, a, I guess, a store on the, a, a corner shop in London on the street. And instead, like, we're like, I go into some Manchester voice and I'm like, now, yeah. do we look like the soft toffs who want cigarettes? Now we want the hard stuff. So suddenly we're like, he goes, oh, something beep. Anyway, we go on this crazy drug run through London. It's a crazy premise. It's really funny. It's going to be on Amazon. We just, I'm doing some ADR for it now, so I guess it'll be screening on Amazon and soon, soon. But it's great, it's a, it's a great premise, it's a funny one. I, I love it because you have these chops of being intense, you have these chops of comedic timing. He just takes himself too serious, he's one of those medic actors, he's like, you know, it just he, he just pushes it too far. You know, you can kind of imagine a, a method actor who just takes it all too far and takes himself too seriously, which kind of works for me, so it's great. So I want to take it back a little bit because while Lord of the Rings won, uh, I'm going to take it back to Pirates of the Caribbean. Great. Um, because there's been a, a lot of talk, you yeah. know, it was believed that we'd seen the final chapter in the role of Will Turner. Um, but there's been some continuing talk of a reboot. Would uh -huh. you consider returning? To that? Yeah. Look, those experiences, those movies, were phenomenal and um, you know working with with that team they were so great Jerry was you know produced these amazing movies and you know you never say never I mean I can't I don't know what the premise is I haven't heard as yet but 
I think that world was phenomenal. I think it's so interesting because, you know, we, we sort of look at new worlds and think, well, what kind of, I mean, Dune is fantastic, right? We all love Dune, right? Yeah. yeah? So there's, there's world building, right? And, and I guess for some of you, Dune is the new thing, but when we when it was it was Paris was the thing, for, right? And we, we built a world there that was really unique. So I'm definitely you know I definitely had a lot of fun doing that. If there was something really fun and cool to do with it, but I don't know what they would do with that. I think they've got like kind of all sorts of ideas afoot, but I we would see. I mean, there are seven seas, and it's pretty. There big. are, and there's there's plenty of ocean out there. That's true. There is. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna hop in because we did have a lot of fan questions. Oh yeah. Who you know they wanted to know what were some of your favorite memories <laughs> from filming Pirates of the Caribbean, um, um, and particularly they asked about Karen Knight a lot. Oh, Kira is so. Well, aside from being strikingly beautiful and and very wonderful to work with, um, and she was so young when she started that 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 whole series and. Um, you know, I think that was a great storyline that we had together. There was, in some ways, Jack was off doing that kind of mad Jack kind of thing, which was phenomenal. And we were this sort of emotional, like, tie that held that, like, love story, that held that kind of narrative into the, the movie forward. So it was a lot of fun. Um, don't ask me to remember any specific things, because I... <laughs> feel like, at that time in my life, it was like... <laughs> Everything was going like, pretty fast. That it's like, literally, I'm like, wait, I, have, I even have friends and family go, God, remember when we were in the Caribbean? I'm like, you came to the Caribbean? <laughs> yeah. Wow, who knew? It's one of those things where, um, you know, I, uh, I literally am like, oh, okay, that happened lifetimes ago. But I'm very grateful for it. Um, but I do, yeah, I remember... I just wrote, I, like, I think people say it's not um, what somebody says, it's how you make them feel, right? Yeah. People remember how you make them feel. And, and I just, I think that whole experience felt good, and so did everyone I worked with, and there wasn't anything that, you know, there was nothing abrasive to any of that experience. And I think, and I hope that, you know, everyone has that same feeling. So I also want to hop in for the Lord of the Rings fans. There was another question that popped up. All right. Legolas versus Will Turner. No weapons. Oh. No weapons. Who wins? I already kind of know this answer. I think it's, it's going to be age and experience over... Which is like really hard because an elf has like ageless experience. Exactly. Um, I just, I feel like this is... Will would give a really good run for his money though. You know what I mean? He'd go down, he'd go down fighting. Yeah, yeah. He'd go down swinging, he'd be like... He'd get up ten times. I mean, keep getting put down by Legolas with one hand or a franchise. finger or something, you know, or like a, maybe a toss of the hair. But like, you know, he'd be like, "Not you again." Um, uh, but Will would just be up and at him, you know, keep going. God I think bless the other him. question is, does the fight ever end at this point? Because both of them feel like, I mean, both they just go is, forever. Yeah, yeah they they just, definitely. Will has that they all don't that like teenage toss or whatever it is, young man's energy. Um, yeah, I think that would be really amusing, actually. <laughs> quite a funny, quite a funny sequence. Actually, that's quite a good AI scan. We should do that. <laughs> Don't anyone else steal that idea? I'm doing that. <laughs> so, um, another thing... Get all my characters together and see who wins a brawl. Oh. <laughs> well, Alien in there. Including your most recent character, you play a boxer in that's the cut. True. Yeah. Um, which you also had to cut your hair, sadly. Yes. Um, <laughs> you know, I just, I have to ask before I ask this question, long hair or short hair, what's the preference? At this age, you know, honestly, sure has so much less management, <laughs> so much less to manage. And I'm like, is it still there? You know, long hair is like, oh, it's fallen a bit weird. You know what I mean? Um, but no, I don't know. I'll probably go. I mean, like, there's, 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 there's people in my life who like my long hair, so we'll see if it makes another appearance at some time. But you know, there's only so many hours in the day and years in the life, right? And weeks in the year. I mean, it takes a long time to grow that stuff and two seconds to cut it. So, um, what were you going to ask? You were gonna I, was, ask I was going to say, so thinking about the, the new show, the Peacock, 
and then thinking the about cut. what you've done with the cut and Gran Turismo, right. you, you've taken on some pretty intense roles. And you, of light, yeah. Yeah, and you really, like, you dive into it. Like, you have no problem Yeah, I go 110% for sure. your body. Like, you lost, what, 35 pounds? Something, yeah, I was like, I, I'm about 185 and I dropped to 151, which was crazy. So the, the movie The Cut, which is the small independent movie we made in London that I developed for some time with um, an amazing, um, with, a, with a guy who I produced something that I shot which landed in COVID, but I think it was probably, it's a movie called Retaliation that was really dark story, but it was probably one of the best performances of my career and it landed in the middle of COVID when like people just went, I mean, maybe they saw, but maybe not. Anyway, The Cup is a movie, it's, it's, a, it's a boxing movie, but the unique thing is it's really about, the fight is about making weight. So it's called cutting weight is what boxers and fighters like MMA guys do, they cut weight. So the movie is about cutting weight. I don't know if you saw a movie called Good Times. Um, it was a movie that um, Rob Pattinson did. It's like a very kind of artsy kind of wild movie. But you basically watch this, this guy go on this crazy journey. He's a boxer who comes out of retirement to have one more sh title shot, flies to Vegas, and he has to drop an insane amount of weight, like not really humanly possible, in a six day, seven day period. And it's like, um, it's just, it, it just, it's, it goes, and you sort of see him kind of come undone a little bit, but in the process. So I started the movie at the end of the movie um, when I dropped, so I dropped down to 150 pounds, 51 pounds. And we started the movie at the end of the movie and then we shot backwards so that I was putting weight on through the movie because you couldn't function without that. At that weight, it was crazy. Um, I was just eating a lot of cucumber, tuna, drinking a lot of water, tons of cardio and feeling very out of it. It's funny because you look at these amazing performances with actors and, and I'm sure you all, like, knowing that you love movies and you see actors, you know, actually when people transform their body, it is truly a crazy, remarkable thing, but it also does do remarkable things for, I think, a performance. So I feel like, you know, I'm excited for the movie. I'm excited for people to see it. I hope that you guys find it and look and seek it out. But. Um, it's a, probably a festival movie we want to go to the festivals, but you know, we just got it wrapped up and we're just cleaning it up and ready to sort of take it on the festival rounds. And so we'll see. That's good. I'm really proud of it. Well, and I think that leans on the fact that you, when you step into a role, again, you step into it, you have this intensity and you are an actor who's got a lot of credits under your name. You know, for you, how have you been able to sustain that level of intensity? I love it. I, f I really love it. People ask me like, where would you rather be? You know, I'm like, I actually love it. I love being on set. I'm like, I'm so blessed. I feel so grateful in my life. I've done crazy things. I've been this, uh, this, this, this acting game has given me wild opportunities. And I found myself in places around the world, whether it's with UNICEF or other things or whatever, but like some really unique places. And I go, where would I rather be? Oh, kind of on set. If, if I ever, unless I'm with my family, and trust me, that's obviously a massive, but like, I love it. I still love it. I'm still curious. I feel like I still am not jaded. Like, I, I, I love the process of thinking through what any kind of character may do. And I also think that like, in some ways, a lot of my peers started in this country really young. They were on Disney channels or whatever. And they kind of like, became like, really comfortable with that set, with that. Like from 10 to, tw you know, from like, literally 10 years old until they were 20. Sometimes younger. Sometimes younger. They, they're like, so it's like second nature. I started in this game, I know it's crazy because of my time, but like I started when I was 20 and I did school theater, you know, before that. And I, you know, so I really kind of cut my teeth on giant movies where the whole world was watching me and I was learning everything. And I actually think that I've learned so much now at this point that things are more, kind of getting more interesting for me because there's less, it's like, I'm like, yeah, I'm rolling the dice on some characters and I'm trying things in different ways. When you're in a giant franchise like Rings or Pirates or whatever, like people don't necessarily get the opportunity to sort of really spread their wings in the same way as you do when you're a movie like The Cup, where you really get to like explore a character and really get into the psyche of a character and understand what that is. So I still find that a blessing and I love it. So I know this is also a fan question, but now I'm curious as you talk about that, what is it about some of these roles that draw you to them, particularly with this level of preparation, like training, 
keto, losing 30 I'm a, pounds. I'm a, I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> I'd say I'm a glutton for punishment. I can live quite comfortably and I had a knocker, do you know what I mean? It's like, I don't know what it is, like I've always, like if I'm on a bike, I'm just grinding up the hill, I'm happy with it. I'm like, oh, this hurts, oh, I must be living. I don't know what it is, it's like, <laughs> maybe as I get older, I'll go with the flow a little more. But I, I like, I think that the road less traveled is the road where you get the most juice and you get the most kind of lessons or you get the most experience and, and sometimes it's easy to take you know the easier path in life or think that you might be and then you get you get that bite on the ass and you go wait what, what was that but if i'm kind of always grinding i'm like oh there's a bite on the ass okay well it's not going to get me later because it's got me right now if you know what i mean um i love it so in addition to your work on screen this will be my last question i'm going to go these fan questions until Wait, we... Wait, we're still here talking? Are you not all bored and senseless? This is oh no, they are definitely still oh, there. Right. They are so excited. Uh, <laughs> you guys want to have questions? I'm just rambling. Um, so, in addition to your on-screen work and being a parent, you've also made it very important in your life to speak out on real issues that you care about, including obviously parenthood, recently in Father's Day. Yeah. You know, why has this been such a priority for you? And, you know, just out of curiosity, what's on your agenda? Like, what are, what's at the top of your plate to take your platform and try to impact? So I worked with UNICEF for 20 years. I got, I, it, was, it, was, it was interesting. My mom was signing my, this is a funny story. So my mom was signing my fan mail. This sounds crazy. She used to get maybe six to eight bags of fan mail. And she literally hired a little team of people from Canterbury who would go through everything and then I would like get sent and I would sign stuff and whatever. She was coming up with crazy ways to make sure everybody got some kind of awkward book. You know, this is like years ago. The Lord of the Rings, the Pirates times was wild. Right, awesome. thanks mom. Yeah, thanks mom. And eventually I like had to like hand that job off to somebody who really knows how to handle it. But <laughs> one of those letters was a letter from somebody in UNICEF who said, we think Orlando would be great to work. And I was like, mom, it's a fan letter. It's like, this is crazy. I mean, what are you talking about? So it took a little minute for me to come around to it. And also I was like, well, how do I feel about, you know, but for 25 years now, 20 plus years rather, I've been working with UNICEF and I've just seen the work that they do around the world to save the lives of women and children. And, and, and it's become, um, a really huge part of my life in I, I sort of said to the woman Mar to Marissa who I travel my travel with for UNICEF I was like I'll just go to places that nobody else will go I'm cool you know I'll go wherever they don't want to go I'm good with that and I just came back from the DRC which is the Congo which is just a very brutal experience um, the Congo being one of the most beautiful countries on the planet our phones wouldn't exist without minerals from the Congo just by the way but this is a country that is like completely being taken advantage of and therefore you know it's very corrupt in many ways and therefore the people are really struggling and particularly the women and particularly the children and it's heartbreaking and it always reminds me of just how lucky I am and how much how important it is so I, I kind of find myself in a position with UNICEF to shine a light in places in the world that other people don't look at you know, there's a lot happening in Gaza and, and there's a lot happening in Israel and there's a lot happening in, you know, all over the world. And we, and by the way, there's a lot happening at home. Let's be honest, we're here in America and you know, there is parts of America that like, I, I see as like, you know, if you're outside of some of the big cities, it can be really challenging. And so I find myself working with UNICEF feeling just like it's the greatest opportunity for me to sort of feel like I'm, 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 I'm learning and not losing sight of just how lucky I am, you know what I mean? Because I feel incredibly blessed. So, you know, when I go to these places and it's brutal to get there and I see the families and the communities struggle the way they do, I think, what can I do to make a difference? Oh, maybe we could get Apple to like put their hand in their pocket since these phones wouldn't work and maybe kind of help these kids out. But, you know, there's always, so I'm always, trying to think big picture about connecting people and because I think sometimes you know it's easy for us to put our head in the sand and, and lose sight of what's important um, and that's true of everyone certainly <laughs> but um, I've been lucky to work with them and have that kind of like oh okay this is a constant reminder you know that's awesome yeah. so before you have to go um, very shortly. I am going to go through as many fan questions as I can. Uh, forgive me for those who I got to and didn't get to read your name, but are you ready? Ready, ready. <laughs> ready. 
What is the most challenging role that, guys. you've played to date? Challenging role I played today? From Sarah McCoy. So I played a character called Malky in a movie that was originally called Romans that is now called, was called Retaliation, the movie that came out. It was a very brutal story about, um, that, that, that talks about um, abuse in the church and for a character, which was really challenging. I would say one of the most challenging dark head spaces for me to be in. And if it wasn't that, second to that is, is Boxer, which is the name of the character in The Cut, which where I, where I did that massive body transformation two really kind of difficult characters to inhabit because of the, the, the physical, emotional, and stress that they kind of have lived through. And as you point out, I kind of go 110% into all these things, sometimes too much so, and then I'm like, so. But those two, those two projects, I would say, define what I think I kind of, you know, in some ways as an actor, like, everybody thinks of Lord of the Rings, everybody thinks of Pirates of the Caribbean, but actually, like, if you watch those movies and saw what I gave in those as a, as a performer, I think you go, oh wow, that's sort of a different thing. So, and the cuts coming, but you know, but yeah, I would say those two because it's because when you're an actor, you kind of pick a character and then you kind of really, if you're somebody who you, you kind of you melt, you mold, you become that, that you take on aspects of the character. It's really hard, hard not to. And I don't, I'm not saying I'm a method actor, but I commit. So if I commit, I get into the headspace, and that's how it makes it feel real to me. Oh. I can only imagine that recovery time in your house with your kids is the most precious time for you. Yeah, it's, 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 it's magic, isn't it? I mean, for those of you who have kids and those of you who are going to have kids, it's, it is the greatest gift. It's also one of the greatest challenges, let's be honest. But we love it. <laughs> um, it's our responsibility to take care of and you know, we do our best. So you recently start, well, this is Tim from, N, from San Antonio. You recently starred in Gran Turismo based on the iconic video game franchise. What's your experience as a gamer yourself and do you play? Oh, that's a really, you know what, I don't. <laughs> I have very limited experience in gaming. Um, I think I used to play Tetris <laughs> on Game Boy. All right, first of all, yeah. don't laugh at Tetris. That game is... I kind of <laughs> loved it. I had a Game Boy and I played Tetris. I remember playing uh, Renegade, which right. was like a kind of kick thing, which mm -hmm. was on a Sega playing mm -hmm. thing console. That's really taking us back, guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Showing my age there. It's okay, some of us have... But otherwise, I've not really dabbled in that world. I think, like... I've tried to stay in the world as opposed to in the other world of, of gaming and I respect people. I mean, there's people doing amazing stuff in the gaming space, you know, and by the way, making crazy livings for themselves. Um, I just never didn't, I don't know, I think it maybe, yeah, I could have got lost in that maybe, who knows. It is very easy to get lost in gaming as a person who loses hours of their life to gaming. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. um, no name on this one, but would you perform in a horror movie? I, you know, it's funny, my son keeps asking me to do a horror movie. He's 13 and he's obsessed, it's crazy. Um, look, Get Out, you know, as a, as a heightened genre, would you call that? I mean, there are versions of horror movies. I mean, Gore Verbinski did The Ring when we were doing Pirates of the Caribbean when there only was, and I thought The Ring was kind of, there is an interesting place where it's so heightened, the characters are so heightened. So like a psychological thriller. A psychological horror thriller kind of thing, I would, I would consider. I mean, I remember watching like, Freddy's Nightmares when I was a kid and I, it destroyed me. I'm so, I'm so oversensitive. Like even, actually, funny story, I was maybe, I don't know, 10, and I watched the original Dracula, which was on black and white at a friend's house, and I could not sleep, I had to go home. I was like, a few doors down, but I literally was like, I don't wow. have time, I'm going home, I'm out, this is too much. No Nosferatu haunted your dreams. Correct, correct. So I'm not like a big, but like with, with my son now, he's such a, like a gauge, I mean, you know, for me in some ways, and he's obsessed with them, so I'm like, I mean, you know, you do see, you know, some great movies uh, in that space, so it would be cool if it was the right thing. So never say never, but haven't read one that I've gone, oh, that's me, I gotta do that. All right, well, we'll just have to wait and see on that one. Um, so, no name again, in all the characters you've played, 
What role would you love to experience again, and what do you get most quoted back to you from a role? <laughs> oh my. Oh my God. Um, look, I was like 20 when I went out to New Zealand on Lord of the Rings, and I like, turned 21, you know, a few months into filming, and like inhabiting the headspace of an elf <laughs> is just really fun. An ageless elf. An ageless, can do anything, immortal elf. Um, you know, mm, so that's low hanging fruit, but it's pretty cool. Balian honestly was like in Kingdom of Heaven. You know, the director's cut of that movie, I think is the movie that should have been released, that was like half an hour longer, but fell shorter than the, 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 the theatrical release because it was just, it held together in a way that kind of kept the audience, because if you engage an audience, you know, somehow the, I think the shorter edit maybe, I think even Ridley would agree, kind of lost the audience's kind of focus in some ways. But that experience with Ridley at that time on that movie was, I'd like to go back because I'd like to be even more present than I was just being present on set, but it was, it was really special um, for me. Um, yeah. Uh, so we have another question without a name. Uh, you've mentioned in the past <coughs> that you made, because you mentioned Marvel earlier. Oh, right. And um, that you, you might be interested in playing a superhero yourself, in, per in, in particular, Captain Britain. Oh, yeah. I mean, only because I think it was an obvious title. <laughs> an obvious <laughs> name and title. Who wouldn't want to play Captain Britain? Um, Sounds great, right? No, I don't know. Um, how are we all feeling about Marvel? <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I think that... Um, I think that, you know, I mean, what Downey did with Iron Man was just like, you know, I think it set the tone, obviously, and there are so many great kind of, and I think what, I think what, you know, Deadpool's doing now is where like, I mean, you know, that's just, Ryan's crushing it on Deadpool and that whole world, I just am like, oh, wish I thought of that. <laughs> um, so, but I don't know, like, um, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I, I, wait, 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 let me ask you, if I was going to do something in that space, how did I ask it without, who, what, what would I do? Fan casting. There you go. Villain. Villain. Oh, great. Right. Okay. Great response. I'm down with that. I feel that, you. That's also a very open response without giving a specific character. I like it. Respect. Respect. Galactus. Uh, Galactus. Oh. 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 Sean, take notes, Galactus. Let's let's find out who's doing that. <laughs> uh, I love that idea. I do love that idea. Okay. That's actually kind of cool. Um, so you know, for your roles, um, you have a couple of fans who are curious. Um, how do you prep? Hi, baby. Uh, 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 there is a sweet baby. Oh, There's a sweet baby. Um, how do you prep for your roles? Besides losing 35 pounds, cutting your hair, so, and, uh, yeah, yeah. going on keto. I, I <coughs> went to drama school in England. <coughs> so, yes, um, I did a movie called Red Right Now, which didn't really land, but it was a like, really unique and kind of noir southern thriller, but I played a southern. Like, I, and even in, in The Outpost, which came out, where I did, it, I did a, an, an unusual thing with my voice. I like to work with my voice accent. Accents and or creating a character vocally. I think, you know, aside from what you see, the first thing you experience is someone's voice. And it's a really interesting way into a character if you do it right and it can create and build. So like in um, in, in the movie for Amazon, what's it called again? Deeper cover. Yeah. Deeper, deeper cover. Deep cover. <laughs> Thanks very much. Um, it's been a long day, guys. Um, if you had an artist. Um, I, I get to play like I do. I do a, a normal and it sounds a bit like I, I guess some of you may be familiar with like Oasis, right? Yes. Oasis being like William Gallagher. So I thought a little bit about that. I was like, I'm gonna play a tough normal as an actor who's being method. So that was kind of funny, right? 
Um, so voice is a good way of me. If I'm not having to learn a physical thing or a sword thing or a you know thing thing, you know. But I like I like all of it. But um, the voice is a really obvious. It is it's not obvious, but it's a really interesting way in. And obviously, like I'll break down the script and I'll kind of think and ask all the questions of the character or you know just think about. It's it's a really fun part of the part of the process is when you get to like lose yourself in another character. And what I also, what I, I love that, and what I also love is that you take the good with the bad. You are very open about talking about if something didn't land, yeah. you're very good at, you're like, you might not have seen that, but it's really good. <laughs> and, and that's something that, that kind of shines some light on how you view your career, how you view your craft. You know, are there things you feel like learned thus far in your career you wish you would have known at 21 landing in New Zealand um, and maybe something you can impart on folks who might be I think, I think curiosity, curiosity is something that we can lose sight of, right? I mean, we can all be sheep and we can all follow the follow the shepherd, follow the like, okay, this is what you're supposed to watch, this is what you're supposed to do. But in this industry, you know, I think the small movies, the independents, the movies that are, uh, you can have an incredible movie experience when you when you look outside of just what's what's there. And I think, you know, like in some ways, you know, just taking chances, risking risking it all, not being afraid of failing. I think the key thing which you can sort of take in life too is like it's people who aren't afraid to fail. Who aren't afraid to make a, like have egg on their face, like just go for it, you know what I mean? And whatever it is. And by the way, I've seen so many remarkable costumes, looks today, where you're just like fearlessly getting dressed up, steps, wearing your wearing your look and owning it, and it's like taking that into life. That's why I kind of love going to a comic con because you get to see people who really just go, we're living here like this. <laughs> you know, you maybe you know show up, but we're doing, and I and I think that's. Something that, like, you know, as a kid, maybe I was like, oh, you know what, don't be afraid to fail, because there's nothing, there's no dress rehearsal here, and as, as life travels on, you know, there's no rhyme or reason to why one movie works and one doesn't. I don't know if you guys saw um, that last Furiosa movie, um, the Mad Max movie. Did anyone see that movie? Because I saw that movie and I thought it was freaking fantastic. I thought it was a ball drop of a movie, and I don't know, it didn't, apparently it didn't perform, whatever that means, but like, you know, it's like, it's interesting, so there is no, there's no rhyme or reason to why certain things pick up ahead of steam, they don't, and I think how that plays out in my mind and in my career and in my life is like, well, you know, take a chance on this. I mean, there are certain elements that come together, you need a good script, you need a good director, you need a good, you know, group of people around you, for sure, like that's, you know, but like I did a movie, you know, I've done, yeah, I just did this movie Wizards, which I'm really excited about, great director, great cast, and I'm still waiting for it to come out. <laughs> I'm excited to see it. It's an A24 movie, it's a comedy. I think it's gonna be phenomenal, but like my point is, great group of people. Oh, wait, better example is, what's that man, what was that? Anyway, you get it, my point is, <laughs> there's no one or reason, so keep taking chances, and, and I look for Wizards when it comes out, it's really great. All right, so before we close up, I want to say, you know, is this an opportunity where folks want to know is there anything else that we can talk about that you have coming out that people can find you in that you're so excited about besides the music? So, um, yeah, the car, I really want you to see the car. I really want you to spend time and share that. <laughs> Tell everyone. Um, <laughs> once we get that into a, into a into distribution. I think, I think uh, the cover's going to be great, I think Wizards is going to be awesome, I think, um, yeah, I think the next, the next thing I'm plumping on, and, you know, just keep living guys, we're in a really unique U-turn in the world, I mean, when AI takes, oh wait, I have a question. Oh, he has a question for y'all, hold on one second. What do we think of AI, yes, no? Yes! Okay, wait, what do we think of AI? Yes. Yes. What do we think of AI? No. No. That is an artificial intelligence. Okay, and I, and I, and all I'll say on that is,
this because I really don't know a huge amount about AI. Is it's that, evil. Uh, it's evil. It's evil. It's evil. Right? Well, That's what John unless, unless, unless you figure out how to protect yourself with your own AI. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> basically, I think we're all getting a lot of algorithm stuff anyway, which is a form of AI, right? But that's interesting, because I think it's going to be an interesting new chapter we're going into. We've just gone through the internet, where we were all like, you know, we're all like hooked on that, that stuff. So it's going to be interesting to see. But I think AI is going to be in the right way. You know, there's good and bads to everything, unfortunately. But certainly fear is not our friend, so we need to get educated. Educated on all things. I like that. Thanks for having me, guys. You're awesome.